welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. <clears throat> I forgot to look to see who was first. Janine Anderson, I think. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Stop, stop, stop. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, yesterday was a rant about antibiotics. Today's a different rant. Because <laughs> I know how much you love my soapboxes. So there was a... Um, has any has something else been mentioned in the last 24 hours about grain free because after a three month gap you have five posts in 24 hours oh for lord's sake okay that's a different rant i'm not i'm not doing that rant <laughs> i can do that rant another day uh good top of the morning to you love it <laughs> um let me tell you that i walked outside this morning and i went whoa pea soup out there it's already 80 degrees humid Ugh. Pea soup. Um, but that's going to break, and then we're supposed to have like seven days with thunderstorms and rain and low temperatures. So we'll see. Uh, the Adored Beast interview was Wednesday. Gwen did it. It's about an hour long, um, but it was awesome. They really talked about a lot of the different products and how they work and how they got started. Uh, so just scroll back on the page a couple of days and you'll find it. Uh, it was also sent out in the Friday Five this morning. So if you're on the email list, you got it in your inbox this morning. Um, so I, I'm doing this rant as a favor for a friend. When you own a rescue, you get asked to take in everybody else's problem pets. You know, the, the aggressive dogs, the um, dogs that pee all over the place, never mind the fact that they haven't been worked up to see if they have a bladder infection or bladder stones or something else going on. The old dogs that uh, can't see, can't hear anymore, are requiring too much care. Um, you know, it's when you, when you take on a pet, it's the same responsibility as taking on a child. You are responsible from start to finish. It doesn't mean when the going gets tough, you give the problem to somebody else. Uh, so I, I took a picture and I'm going to post it separately. Uh, so somebody wanted to give up their dog because they've got small children and the dog is pooping and peeing in the house and she just can't take it anymore. Well, have you had the dog worked up to see if it has a problem? Have you done any training? Was the dog ever house trained? Was it just not a problem before you had three small children running through this? Um, we have all rescue dogs. Now, two of them came from private homes. One of them, when he came to us, she said, oh, by the way, he will mark things. Like we knew we were taking on a dog. He's an intact male. We got females, they're spayed, but he, you know, he marks. So guess what? There's a lot of diapers in our house, a lot. I'll post a picture, I can't post it right now, it's not letting me do that, so I'll post it later. We have diapers for girls, we have diapers for boys. By the way, we sell them on Amazon and we sell them on our website because we realize how much of a problem it is. If we leave Stuart unwrapped for five minutes, guaranteed, He's going to pick a piece of furniture and he's going to mark it or a corner post in the house. It's what he does. And guess what? Because he does it, now George is like, oh, that's what we're supposed to do in the house? Yeah. We don't have carpet for a reason. And our cats are not declawed. 
We have leather furniture sitting in our garage is brand new leather furniture. Our cats don't scratch the leather furniture. The last one that scratched leather furniture was Star, and when she passed away, there hasn't been scratching of leather furniture. By the way, there's scratching posts everywhere. They use them all the time. I can't tell you how many cats came into my clinic with the request of, I want my nine-year-old cat declawed because I just got new furniture. Oh, should have thought about that a long time ago. And by the way, that's what cats do. Give them an outlet. Give them something else. Figure out what substrate they like. Do they like leather? Good. Give them a leather stretching post. Do they like carpet? That's what our guys like. Ours like carpet and the um, rope. Uh, a lot of cats like the new car corrugated cardboard scratchers. Yes, girl and boy panties. Shayna leaks like a sieve. She doesn't mark intentionally. She doesn't pee intentionally. She leaks like a sieve. Haven't figured out how to stop that. I think her spinal problems are so bad, we're never going to stop that. That's okay. Because we have pee pads, by the way, we sell those as well. We have pee pads in multiple places throughout the house. Our dogs are trained to use the pee pads. George, actually, if he's desperate to go, he will go find a pee pad and he will squat like a girl and use the pee pad. This is what animals do. Guess what? Gwen and Brandon were here the other night. Gwen took the diaper off Sarah. Sarah peed on our floor. Not getting rid of the child. She peed on my floor. Oh, well. That's why we have this easy cleanup floor. Pets are not disposable just as children are not disposable. You don't get rid of them because they pee and poop on your floor. And you don't make somebody who owns a rescue feel guilty or responsible for your lack of training, lack of care, lack of whatever it is that caused you to be in a situation where you have an animal who poops and pees all over the place. Ours do it. That's what having animals is about. Hugh and I once had this dream I think it was when we had 13 dogs and five cats. And we said, you know, when we retire, we're going to get one insignificant hairless cat and name it Harry. And we're going to live in our motor home and take that cat everywhere with us. And he'll just be so easy to take care of and we won't have all this cleanup. Yeah, that didn't happen, isn't going ha to happen. We're accumulating more animals instead of less. Because it's what we do. It's who we are. We're animal people. We love our animals. We take good care of them. So, and I know I'm preaching to the choir. You guys, you know, you're here because of how much you care about your pets. But, you know, it's sometimes really difficult on social media to be tactful when you see these posts where people are like, I need to rehome my dog. I just had a baby and it's too much to take care of. I need to rehome my cat because it peed outside the litter box. No. First of all, get a veterinary workup. When we got Myra, one of the reasons we got Myra is because she peed around the house. Oh, let's not do a workup to figure out why. The poor thing came with two dozen bladder stones, a horrendous infection. She was miserable. She had no choice. People would come to me and want their animals put to sleep because they were peeing in the house. And I'm like, well, how about we do a urinalysis? How about we take an x-ray and see if they have bladder stones? No, I just want to put to sleep. I don't want to deal with it. I would say no. I would refuse. I had one woman so mad at me because I would not euthanize her cat for peeing outside the litter box. And I said, well, I'm perfectly willing to work up this cat and figure out why it's doing what it's doing. Let's not talk about the inappropriate diet. Everything else that is wrong with what's the obesity. The cat probably had arthritis, couldn't even get in and out of the box. We won't talk about all that stuff. She was so mad at me. She said, I'm just going down the street. Somebody else will do this for me. And I just looked at her and said, they probably will. But I can sleep tonight because I didn't do it. I am not responsible for killing your pet that is a family member. So. That's today's soapbox. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, supporters, I don't know if we're going to do tonight or tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> you have four senior dogs. They all have poop and pee issues and wouldn't trade them for the world. I, I wouldn't trade our guys for the world either. We sleep with pee pads all over our bed and diapers on dogs and pee pads on dogs. Hugh gets up in the middle of the night every night 
when we had Charlie and Scout, one of us had to sleep. Hi, Ashley. One of us had to sleep downstairs on the sofa with those two boys all night because they had to go out, oh, I don't know, six or seven times a night or they would just be uncomfortable and get up and pace around. That's what you do. My mother struggled for probably a year with Shotzi to make sure that she got in and out of the house. My mother only weighs 100 pounds and the dog weighed 50 pounds. And she would help that dog. She would help that dog. Um, and no, it was not easy. And she would get so upset if Shotzi had an accident in the house. And I'm like, mom, she's, she's no different than ours. I mean, she's like, I don't want you to have to clean up after my dog. I'm like, you clean up after ours all the time, like every day, really not a big deal, not a big deal. <laughs> so, uh, you're dealing with a newly incontinent dog. It's a learning experience. Yeah. And you do anything for him. So Jamie, for those dogs that are suddenly incontinent, definitely check out acupuncture, check out herb, check out chiropractic. A lot of these guys with chiropractic care will, will improve, especially the boys, uh, and the boys, you know, make sure you don't have a prostate problem going on. So there's, there's, you know, so many different things that can be contributing to that. So make sure you get a really good workup. Um, look for all the different things that you can do to solve the problem. But if you can't solve the problem, you know, make sure you get a culture that there's not an infection going on there. If you can't solve the problem, get some boy piddle wraps. They're awesome. Ours don't have to have pads put in them. They wash beautifully. Uh, by the way, they get a little stinky. So we found these things. I, you know, I hate using synthetic um, sm smelly things. But the Unstoppables, I think they're made by Tide. They're these little crystal things. I put those in and it does help. Because uh, they're, it, the, yeah. Anyway, but I like washable diapers rather than disposable. And I don't like having to dispose of pads all the time. <laughs> You're a better woman than me because you would tell someone they're an idiot if they go crazy about their dog's mishaps. Well, you know. Oh, come here. Ah, ah, oh, <laughs> I got him because he's sporting a wrap. That's George in his wrap. See, he covers the pee pee parts really well. <laughs> Say hi, Georgie. He says, How do you mean, mommy? Showing off my diapers, my pants. Mwah. Good boy. Okay. Alrighty. Got to get to the farm. You have one that's been checked out thinking its behavior is only two and a half. Well, could be behavior. Stewie, it's definitely behavior. He marks everything. Diapers. Diapers. Yeah, true pet lovers will not give up an animal for accidents. You know what? We don't even give them up for on purposes. <laughs> I mean, with Stuart, it's a definite one purpose. <laughs> is what it is. Say hi, Georgie. Oh, Georgie's our little English toy who has a paralyzed face. That's why one ear looks higher than the other and he can't blink his left eye. You'll notice the right one blinks. The left one does not. Requires eye drops about every hour. But we do it for Georgie. Yeah, buddy. He had a little dryer episode when the groomer came last time so he didn't actually get groomed he just got washed and dried apparently there's this thing called dryer seizures where he just freaks out the groomer was so upset she's and he's done that before so she said i'm not going to shave him today so we got fuzzy feet we need our feet done yes yeah, stressful environment can lead to that you know three small children in the house dog's probably a little freaked out is what it is. Okay, everybody have a great day. Gotta go feed donkeys.